Once we have a scatter plot of all the dots, we are often interested in the trend of the data and what direction it's going. What we really want to do is draw a line that goes through the data that approximates the data as best as possible. This line can be thought of as the line of best fit. It's the closest possible line. to all the points on the scatter plot. Now, you might remember from your algebra classes that we had this equation y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Well, m in y equals mx plus b is very important to us. m is on average, the amount that y increases or decreases, if it's negative, for every x increase. And so knowing what that m, that slope of the line is, can be very informative to us because it tells us, in this case, as we were graphing missing assignments, versus exam scores, the slope would tell us how much, on average, the exam scores are going to decrease for every additional missing assignment. So we might be interested in, then, what is the value of m? In fact, we're also interested in what is the value of b. And sure enough, we have a formula for each of those. So that formula is going to be m, the slope, is equal to, in the numerator, the sample size times the sum of the xy products minus the sum of the x's times the sum of the y's. And then we're going to divide by the n, in parentheses, times the sum of the x squared minus the sum of the x's squared. And once we have m, the slope, we can find b, the y-intercept. And b, the y-intercept, parentheses around the numerator, is the sum of the y's minus b times the sum of the x's, all divided by the sample size. So let's see if we can hop over to Excel and actually find the values for m and b and ultimately build the line of best fit for this data. We talked about in a previous video about making the first column the missing assignments x, the second column the exam scores y. We can make an x squared, a y squared, and an xy column quickly by saying equals, selecting the x value, shift 6 and squaring it, equals, selecting the y value, shift 6 and then squaring it, shift 6 giving that caret symbol, and then 2 the exponent. And for xy, we can say equals, click the x's, times, click the y's, and hit enter. Then I can select that first row and double click the dot in the bottom corner. It'll copy that formula down so that we've got all the x's, the y's, the x squareds, the y squareds, and the xy's. And then we can quickly find the sum of each column by underneath each column saying equal sum, open a parentheses, select all the values, and hit tab. Clicking that first one, grabbing that dot, and dragging it across, it will add up all of those tabs. Replacing those formulas that we just found for m and b, we're going to find m, the slope, and b, the y-intercept of this best line of fit that we can put on this graph. For m, we could do this on our calculator, or we can do this on Excel. I'm just going to do it on Excel. I'm going to say equals, open a parentheses. n is the sample size of 6 times, which is shift 8, the sum of the xy, so I'll click that value minus the sum of the x's, click that value, times the sum of the y's, click that value, 
close the parentheses on the numerator, divided by, open the parentheses on the denominator, in my sample size is 6, times the sum of the x squareds, minus the sum of the x's, and then I want that value squared. And when I close the parentheses and hit Enter, I'm going to get my slope at negative 4.32 when we round. For b, then, we can say equals, open a parentheses for the numerator. We want the sum of the y's minus the slope, which I just calculated, times the sum of the x's. Close the parentheses and divide by the sample size of 6. And we end up with a y-intercept of 89.9. So using those formulas, then, using our example of missing assignments, and test scores, we found our equation in this y equals mx plus b form. The equation is going to be y equals m. We just found out m, the slope, was negative 4.32 times x, plus b, the y-intercept, is 89.90. This, then, is the equation for the line of best fit for our scatter plot. Now, as you might guess, there is another way to do this on Excel that does not require us to go through all the formulas and calculations. So let's take a look at that. So on Excel, scatter plots. So first, you have to make the scatter plots. But on the scatter plot, if you hit the Add button, you can add a trend line, then double click the line, and then you're going to find the option to display equation on chart and it will give us the equation directly on the scatter plot without having to go through the steps of the formulas. Let's take a look at doing that. We've already got our scatter plot made of missing assignments versus exam scores. If I click the little plus in the top right corner, the very last option is to add a trend line. And when I click the trend line, it's going to stick the line of best fit on my graph for me. To get the equation of the trend line, I'm going to double click the line. And when I double click the line, it's going to open up these options to format the trend line. There's some options to format what it looks like. There's some options to sh affect how it's displayed. And the last option is actually to edit the mathematics behind the trend line. That's what we want. Under the last option, all the way at the bottom, there is an option to display equation on chart. And if I click that display equation on chart, it's going to put the trend line here for me to see the equation. And it's kind of small, so if I can't see it, if I double click it, I can adjust the size of the trend line if I want to, or I can drag it to where I want to see it. But either way, you can see we end up with the same trend line we had before, the negative 4.31, 32 when you round, times x plus 89.9. Exact same numbers that we calculated by hand, but doing it on the trend line is probably a little quicker. Once we have our trend line, we can actually look at interpreting the slope on the trend line. The slope on the trend line is the number that's in front of the x. So in this case, we've got negative 4.32. We've already talked about the fact that m is, on average, the amount y increases or decreases for every x increases. So if we put that in context for this situation, the y's, we're talking about the grade on the test. We can say that the grade on the test is decreasing. And I say decreasing because the slope was negative. Decreasing by 4.32 points on average for every additional missing assignment. So the slope in context tells us how much y is changing for every additional x 
In this case, the grade on the test is decreasing 4.32 points on average for every missing assignment.